The wait is almost over. The Netgear Nighthawk XR routers with Duma OS are finally getting new firmware in the very near future. Currently, the Netgear Nighthawk XR500 is in closed beta. Now, before everybody goes to the comment section, how do I get in? Uh, you can go to the forums and ask kindly, and if they have more room, they'll let you in. Remember, this is a closed beta, so they want feedback. Even if that feedback after a week is, hey, everything is working great, good job, they need that so that they can continue to iron out any bugs, make sure people are having a good experience, and get this firmware pushed to all the other routers so that they finally are all updated. There's some big things that have been changed and so there's some stuff that could change because this is a closed beta. So we're gonna hop into everything. There's one big feature missing compared to the R2, but it's not really that big of a deal. And there's one that they added to the XR, which is huge and we'll go over both of those. So first off, we have our main dashboard. That hasn't changed at all. If you'd like to pin things here, of course you can do that. I don't, I don't really see a need to pin anything as the newest thing they've added to the XR routers makes pinning things kind of useless, but uh, it's still here if you need it. All right, the geo filter. This has finally been updated and upgraded to where the R2 is. It has your home setting, your polygon mode, all the stuff. So we're finally there. It feels a lot better. I haven't had any issues when it comes to servers or anything. It's been running really well. The only console I've been really playing on for testing over the last couple of weeks has been my Series X. Um, I have no complaints here, so kudos, kudos. The ping heat map is here, and we can ping our favorite things. This is really important. You know, we want to make sure that our ping is low, and uh, there's some stuff coming in the future, which we'll talk about in an upcoming video, which I think is uh, going to be pretty cool. But uh, anyway, so that's here. We got it. That's awesome. Quality of service. This is something that has been changed a lot over the years. Those changes have been finally pushed to the XR routers. As you can see, I'm actually in the middle of testing stuff. I was at 86, 86, lowering my bandwidth some, uh, currently on never. I do have a little bit dragged toward gaming, and one of the big changes is deep packet inspection for not only the R2, but the XR routers has finally been fixed. And on top of that, they are taking feedback on your favorite games to be added to deep packet inspection. So that is huge. 2023 is already starting off to be pretty good. I like that idea quite a lot. They have a link you can go to, which I'll post down below for you, that you can ask to have your favorite game added to the deep pack and inspection system. So that's working a lot better. Currently, the one of the big differences here between the R2's current beta and the XR's current beta is cloud gaming is something that is here under traffic prioritization that is not there on the R2 currently. Don't know if that's a Netgear decision, a NetDuma decision. I like having this extra option for when I want to test a game out on Xbox, but I don't want to download it because cloud gaming, it's okay. It works decent enough to play 30 minutes of a game and see whether or not it's something you want to download and finish playing. So it's really nice to have that feature um, as its own little thing. It seems to just be integrated into the R2 in a different way. Who knows if that's something they're going to change on either side. Again, this is a beta. Network monitor, this is obviously something really important and it is a lot better now because deep pack and inspection is actually you know doing its deep pack and inspection thing you can see what traffic belongs where and that is really awesome so that is improving and they're making even more improvements currently and uh, I'm just really excited for the future of deep pack and inspection and how everything's going to work uh, with the XRs and the R2s so really good stuff there now this is where I'll add the one feature that is currently missing compared to the R2's current beta. Data history has made a return. And for those who want to dig in and see what's what and all of that, uh, that is something that is kind of important. Some people may be like, oh, that's pretty big. I think it will eventually make it to the XR routers. Maybe not though. We're just gonna have to wait and see. I don't really know what the plans are after everything's been you know um, ironed out and these betas turn into full firmwares and get pushed to all the routers so we're just gonna have to wait and see on that i'll keep you guys updated traffic controller we can control our traffic turn things off and on all that's here device manager this is something that i've seen a lot of complaints over the years when it comes to dhcp and things you know showing offline when they're online and just weird stuff 
it is, I would say, from my experience, 99% fixed. Looking through the forums, there are a couple people saying, hey, it's not working 100%, seems to work and to not work, it's better, but it's not perfect. I don't know if they didn't factory reset or there's something weird in their setup causing it, but for me, personally, all my stuff has been working great when it comes to DHCP recognizing devices. And when I add a new device, uh, you know, you gotta still add your name and stuff, but all of that is available in here. And when a device is on, it's showing it's on. When it's off, it's showing it's off. So that is a massive improvement. I never really had issues too much with previous firmwares. Sometimes I'd have a device on, it wouldn't show it's on, and then other times it would. So it's, it's a lot more stable now. And it seems like the general things I've been looking through on the closed beta side, and the forums seems to be pretty well fixed so that's good uh, connection benchmark this is huge you got to be able to run your tests right here on the router now one of the things with connection benchmark that's always been kind of wonky and still is is the speed test sometimes it just doesn't register your speed test properly uh, something they've been working on and I'm sure will continue to work on uh, I don't think it's really that big of a deal you know what your speeds are and I always use the connection benchmark along with another outside test and then just kind of even out the two so that I have the best buffer bloat. One of the biggest changes that, man, I harped on this for years. The community wanted this for years. It's finally here. Ad blocker. Yes, this all oh, just has me excited. I, I just finally. Now, a while back, the XR1000 finally got ad blocker, but then all the rest of the XR router users still left in the dust. It is now here. I will have a video out sometime in the near future showing how to add stuff to the ad blocker, as this is really important. Their base list is really good, blocks a lot of things, but you can see I've added my OSID and OSID NFSW. It's because I got kids. I don't want them looking at that kind of stuff. And so you can add those kind of lists right here. It's super easy video on that in the near future. Hybrid VPN. And this is something that is uh, a lot of people use VPNs. I've never really messed with VPNs. I did years ago, and then I was like, ah, it's not really helping my connection and sure it hides my IP and whatever. I don't, I don't really care about that too terribly much. So it's not something I've really messed with. However, I've tried to pay close attention to because I know people have had trouble with it. It seems like it is almost 100%. There have been a couple complaints and NetDoom was like, all right, well, we're gonna look into those and hopefully get those ironed out. So it mostly seems to be fixed and working good. Uh, I don't know if those couple complaints are again, just setup related or whatever, but it's almost there. So if you use a VPN and you wanna have that extra, you know, uh, stuff going on there, it's working a lot better now. I'm not gonna click on system information as you guys know what that is. That's just the information about your system. All of that is there and it works. Same with settings. All the settings are the same as they were. It's all the Netgear stuff. I'm not gonna worry about that. The one big thing that has changed that it came to the R2 recently and is now here when it comes to the XR routers. This is huge and I've shown it off before, but I'm gonna show it off again. This is the mobile side of your dashboard. <gasps> I know, right? There's a mobile thing? Yes, not only is there a mobile app which you can download on your phone, right? For the Play Store or whatever, iOS. Um, there's also this way of getting into Duma OS on a mobile device. And you can also log in here on your PC, although it does complain and say, hey, you're on a PC, you don't need to be on the mobile side. You can see some key differences here. First off, priority boost. Priority boost allows you to boost just one thing. So click on this, you can say, hey, I need to boost just game here to just this thing um, if you want to. I've only messed with this once in testing, it works. That's all I can say about that. It, it does what it's supposed to do if you need it. I don't feel like a lot of people are gonna need it, but if you do, it's handy to have. The ping optimizer, this is a huge thing. It's pretty much auto setup, but a little bit different. It'll optimize your ping for you and tell you what your percentage is. If you go to ping optimizer, let it run, and it optimizes a certain ping, it will actually show that ping difference here as well, which is also really cool. Uh, and then you have your two main buttons from work from home and prioritize gaming. Now you may notice earlier there was cloud gaming underneath the traffic prioritization. 
uh, settings and isn't here. But don't worry, you can still dig in and get to that. But I just leave gaming on and then you can go to your geo filter. You can see right here, when you play an online game, you can see your ping and the console or whatever device you're on. This is what makes a significant difference when you are playing online. Now, one complaint I have about this is when you have multiple devices and they're all online, they can kind of cycle through here and that's something that I just don't like. I want the ability to be able to lock a device so I can just come to this main dashboard and always see that device's ping. When you have one device going, if you're a single console household and you're like, I just play my PlayStation or Xbox, this is huge because you can just open up your dashboard on your phone, grab your phone, open dashboard, it, the ping is right there. You can just see it. And of course, it still has your little graph. So if there's spikes or whatever, you can look over and be like, oh, I just had a spike. And you don't have to actually see the, the ping number. That's a huge, huge improvement. And of course, we can just go to the geo filter from here. And then we've got our drop down bar. We can go to our geo filter. We can go to our heat map. There are some differences visually here and the way things work. Of course, there's a different tour. Um, still basically the same, but as you can see, there are minor differences to how things integrate when it comes to the mobile side. It's a lot cleaner with this uh, monotone. I don't know, I don't know what you call this, but whatever, this, this look, this gray look, I like quite a bit. Um, then we come back over, of course, we got our ping heat map. And this is really nice, let's get the tour on that. And you can choose your game right here. We'll choose COD, because that's like the most popular thing. And then boom, it just shows up all your pings right there. So that's really nice. And then of course, network priority. You can go to your congestion control so you can dig into those things, turn that off and on. You got your automatic mode and your, your uh, other mode, your normal just on mode. And then of course you can come into your bandwidth allocation and allocate bandwidth this way. I, I actually like this. The one complaint I have is on a phone, my screen isn't that responsive. It's kind of an older phone. And so when I'm dragging these bars, sometimes I'm trying to get a certain percentage like 20 and it'll go to like 21 or 20.5. It's a little finicky. I'd love to be able to just type the number here and it, that would be a bit better. Everything could, you know, use a little bit of improvement there, but uh, that's definitely a lot easier to get to. You can create your rules and all that stuff right here on your network priority. Of course, you've got your monitor. This is really easy to see now too. You can just pop right in and you see all of your traffic, what's going on, your gaming, your media. And when you want a game and you were looking for gaming traffic, how, how much is each thing using? way easier to dig in on the mobile side than the main dashboard. So this is a huge improvement. Device manager, of course, is here. You can manage all your devices. Super simple layout. Things are online, things that are offline. Easy, you can clear all the offline stuff if you want. If you're no longer using those things, clear them out or you can just leave them there. And then we have our ad blocker. Hey, that's a great thing to have here. If you're having a problem, like something's not working right, you can come over here and pause your ad blocking capability for each device like you can on the main dashboard. So that's a huge improvement. If you're feeling something wonky, you need to just run a quick ad blocker pause, you come over here, you just turn it off or you can just pause the whole thing, which is great. We have our ping test and our speed test. Now something you may have noticed in the connection benchmark on the main dashboard these things are connected here on the mobile app they are separated so when you do this it will still show up on your main dashboard but it won't have the uh, other stuff going with it it'll just show just ping or just speed and you can see you know where my stuff is currently through all the testing i've been doing so uh, yeah cool all right and then the more features this is if you know um, you want to get into the more features basically telling you go to the main dashboard and then your settings the one thing here is you can change your theme to a, uh, a lighter theme all right so we can use the system or we can go light let's just take a look at the light theme real quick oh, it doesn't seem to be liking me today I do it wrong. <laughs> now, whatever. Theme doesn't seem to be working currently. Not a big deal, as I think most people would go black anyway. <laughs> so that is it. That is everything when it comes to the XR routers. Everything that we should be getting. What are the changes I'd like to see? Well, I've kind of ran through them as we ran through everything. There's just minor improvements here and there that you know uh, both this mobile dashboard and the main setup for the xr routers i think need um, looking through all the comments and stuff in the forums i think we're really close how close 
I don't want to put a date on it. I just really don't. Hopefully before summer. And the summer break is really important. Sure, we're out and about doing things, but a lot of us gamers are also, if we come home and after time with our family, we like to game for a little bit. So hopefully all this stuff is ready before summer of this year. Fingers crossed. Let me know what you think of all the stuff headed to the XR routers. Are you excited? Are you hopeful? I know I am. This is gonna be huge when it finally drops for everybody. Till the next time, as always, take it easy.